So we are on a series right now on the topic of the church's mission. The church's mission right now is to help people discover their purpose, live in power, and discover their God-given potential. Say it with me. Say purpose. Purpose. Power. Power. Potential. Potential. Purpose, power, potential. And you know, it's always been the mission when we first started this church. And so last week we talked about purpose. Tonight we're talking about living a powerful living. And so what is power exactly? How do we get power? What is power? What does power mean to us? What is power in our daily life? You know, of course, we know power as in the aspect of like, you know, strength. But power is not in strength on how much muscle do you have. I have a lot of muscles. All I got to do is just push it up a little bit and I got muscles. <laughs> okay? <laughs> I love my six pack so much, I put cushion around it. You got to protect it. You know what I mean? I tell people all the time, I'm in shape. Round is a shape. All right, all right. I have a body of a god. All right. Buddha. Okay? <laughs> but see, people think to be powerful, you have to be a strong person. Hmm. But no matter how strong you think you are, if you stand in front of a truck, a moving truck, a semi, and you say, hey, stop, that semi truck probably won't stop. Hmm. It's like, mm, I don't care, get out of the way. But you get something super scrawny, so skinny, with no strength at all, put him in a blue uniform and a badge and say, stop in the name of the law, it will stop immediately. Why? Because it's not about power and strength, but power through authority. Say authority. Authority. So tonight we're going to talk about powerful living and not powerful in the strength aspect, but in power through authority. And that's power and authority through the power of speaking in tongues. Let's pray. Father God, we pray tonight you would reveal yourself, speak to us loud and clear, and we thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're in this place. Be with us now. Give us fresh revelation from heaven. We give you glory, honor, and praise. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. amen. Now, thank you so much. Bishop, give it up for Bishop. <laughs> now, people get a little weary when it comes to speaking in tongues. They think, oh, this is a weird thing. And it's so funny because we had prayer meeting Thursday. And it was so cute because as we were, people were praying in tongues, I guess Nati thought we were just like playing. So as we were like doing our little da da da, I guess she was making also kind of noise or whatever else, thinking they would play along. It's like, oh, that's so cute. Out of the mouth of babes, right? The Bible says. <laughs> so she's already filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> but here's what it says in 1 Corinthians 14 1. Now, here's the funny part people always quote 1 Corinthians 14. In the aspect where they say the spiritual gifts have stopped, the spiritual gifts have ceased. Right? A lot of people use that scripture that in 1 Corinthians 14, that spiritual gifts have ceased because the perfect has come. But the perfect has not yet come because right now the prince of the air, the Bible says, is the enemy, is Satan. So which means here on earth we need to have godly power. So 1 Corinthians 14 one says, pursue love. And earnestly, not just kind of, earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may, what? Prophesy. There's this cool uh, prophet that we love watching, Prophet Levy. And it's so funny because every time he would like teach and preach and, or prophesy, the congregation don't say amen. They yell out, prophesy, Jeez. prophesy. And I was like, ooh, that's intense. So I was like, so he'll be walking around like, prophesy. I'm like, oh, wow, that's different. But it's the power of prophecy. Mm -hmm. So what is power? You know, we're talking about the power of speaking in tongues. And so here's the thing. We want to focus tonight on earnestly desire the spiritual gifts. You see, we're in the month right now. They call it Mental Health Awareness Month. You guys don't know that? Mental Health Awareness Month. And mental health is the aspect of our mind. That's where the power of anxieties, depression, and all kinds of weird thoughts that come in. And so the thing that's fascinating is that when we talk about speaking in tongues, it's the thing that caused, I did a brain scan in an actual doctor's office. The doctor's actually agnostic, so which means he doesn't believe in the gifts, he doesn't believe in God, he doesn't believe whatever, but he goes, let me get this cool MRI machine to scan the brain as a guy is speaking in tongues. Mm -hmm. 
but you know it's really fascinating a whole study behind that so here's the thing speaking in tongues there's so many videos i saw one hour long video on the oprah network the oprah herself sent a doctor to go and study this actual doctor like full-on brain surgeon to go and study the brain waves they put all kinds of different like monitors in the head on someone just praying english and another person just go ahead and say your abcs another person pray in tongues this doctor had a, the brain and it, they're doing okay a b c the person's just talking about he's reading a book a person over here has headphones on and like worship music going on praying in tongues and it's really fascinating they see the monitors of the different brain waves what's happening and the woman with the speaking in tongues has a lot more brain function going on at the same time both left and right and back and front while she's speaking in tongues but it's like, how is that possible? That the reporter asked, because she's only speaking in something that she doesn't understand. As the only phenomenon I can say is something. They're actually improving their brain as they speak in tongues. They're improving their mental state. And you know what they say the definition of repentance is? Repentance is not saying, I'm sorry. Sorry to bust your bubbles out there. Repentance does not mean saying sorry, going to the altar, saying, oh, I'm so sorry, God, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. That's not actually repentance. The word repentance, by definition, is metanoia. Metanoia is the Greek. Metanoia means meta, change. Noia is mind. So to change your mind. Metanoia. Noia is mind. Meta is change. Metamorphosis. Noia is noggin. So the word repentance is to change one's mind. That speaking in tongues alters the mind. So my friends, here's the thing. Speaking in tongues is a powerful tool. That was the scientific aspect. There's so many videos, like three hours long. I'm like, okay, I only have like three minutes. <laughs> but here's a verse on what is the power. Okay, Matthew 3.16 says, As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. At that moment, heaven was opened and he saw a spirit of God descend on him like a dove alighting on him. Luke 24, 49. I am going to send you what my father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. My friends, that shows, he's talking to the disciples. This shows you can follow Jesus. These guys have been following Jesus for years, but they still didn't have that power. So you can go ahead and actually fall, rub shoulders with Jesus, be with his presence. Mm. But he's saying, look, don't leave this area until you've been clothed with power from on high. Mm. Jesus has always been the son of God. He's always been from the virgin birth, descended from heaven into this earth. He's always been the son of God. But the Bible says the spirit never entered him until his baptism. So, with that being said, understand this. You can be here and say, oh, I know God. Oh, I love God. Oh, God's so cool. Me and him are homies. I talk to him every single day. Mm -hmm. He talks to me. But there's a difference between being with God and having his power. Mm -hmm. So tonight, we're going to talk about his power, and we're going to pray that we receive that power. Mark 16, 17. And these signs will accompany those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak in new tongues. 1 Corinthians 14, 4. Anyone who speaks in tongues edifies who? Themselves. But the one who prophesies edifies the church. Let me pause right there. When someone speaks in tongues, understand this. You're not supposed to understand what the person's praying. If you're praying in tongues, you're not supposed to understand it. When you're praying in tongues, when someone else is praying in tongues, it's not meant for you. You know the word edify there, what that means is to build up. It's to build up. To edify oneself is to build up. So whenever you're praying in tongues, if you're feeling discouraged, you're feeling weak, you're feeling emotionally struggling, speak in tongues. Pray in tongues. It's so Powerful. Okay, see, okay, that's great, but how do we speak in tongues? Tonight you're going to receive that gift. Amen. So anyone who speaks in tongues edifies themselves, but the one who prophesies edifies the church. Romans 8, 26. In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. 
we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Now, you know what that means there? See, there's the perfect will of God, and then there's your will, right? Your will is like, I want this, I want that, I want this, I want that. It's my will. And then there's God's will. God's will is like, no, you're meant for more. No, you're meant to go here, not there. See, you know, it's funny. It's so funny. It's like Nati will be like, I want, you know, she's like craving for a uh, little milk. She wants Ensure. She's like, I want Ensure. She's like, no, we're about to grub good right now. And then oh, we're on our way over there. And she's like fussing and crying. I want this Ensure. She's like, we're going to get sushi, girl. Chill out. But she doesn't know that she's crying because she wants her Ensure. She wants her little milk. She wants that. And she's crying and she's really like frustrated. She's like, you go away. <laughs> she's like so mad. But later on, it's like, look, we got sushi. And then she's like, arm around. And then she's like munching on that sushi. And that's the thing with us. Is it, with us, it's fascinating because we're over here like, God, I want this. I want this right now. I want this right now. Give this to me. He's not giving it to you. Great. And you're like, why, why are you so mean? Go away. I don't want to talk to you no more. <laughs> but he's like, dude, I got sushi for you. It's much better than that. Does that make sense? And so the, what this is saying here is in the same way the Spirit helps us in our weakness, we do not know what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. So as someone's praying in tongues, you may be praying, God, I want this, I want this, I want this, but you start praying in tongues, the Spirit says, God says, God, don't give it to them. Don't give it to him. Give him this instead. See, here's the funny part. God is a gentleman. He won't give you nothing unless you ask. The Bible says you have not because you ask not. So there are things in our life that won't be unlocked in our lives until we ask verbally. Wait, wait, wait. Doesn't God know I deserve provision? Doesn't God know I deserve this goal or this dream? Or Doesn't God know I deserve? He knows, but he's saying, like, I ain't giving you nothing until you ask. I'm not giving you nothing until you ask. I am. He says, well, aren't you? If he's a good father, he should provide me some food. He's like, oh, okay, I'll give you food, but I'm not giving you nothing unless you ask. So keep it in mind. But how do we ask his perfect will? If he says, like, I want to ask, but if he's not going to give it to me unless I ask, how do I ask for the sushi if I don't know there's sushi coming? How? Praying in tongues. Because the Spirit prays for us, intercedes for us the perfect will of God on our behalf. So there are things in our life that will not be unlocked unless we pray. Acts 2, 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Acts 19, 6. And when Paul had laid hands on them, the Holy Spirit came on them and they began to speak in tongues and prophesying. So why have it? Why have the gift of tongues? 1 Corinthians 14, 2. For anyone who speaks in tongues speaks not to men but to God. No one understands to him but utters mysteries in the Spirit. You know, mysteries is we don't know what God's plan is for us. Mm -hmm. But when you pray in tongues, you're praying for things to unlock in your life. Amen. Angela, every single morning, we pray. Early morning, every single morning, we'll wake up and we'll grab our hands and we'll just start praying in tongues. We'll pray in tongues, and then we'll pray in English as well. So we, but we pray in tongues every single morning. A lot of times, Angela will be in her room and she'll have her music blasted, praying in tongues. Mm. And because things do not get unlocked, less we pray in the Spirit. And so, 1 Corinthians 14, 14. For if I pray in a tongue, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. You see, your spirit man is connected to God, the heaven. Your spirit man. So you say, oh, I have a gut feeling, X, Y, and Z. That's your spirit. That's the Holy Spirit giving you unction. Ooh, this is a gut feeling. Don't do this. Don't do that. So if I pray in tongues, my spirit prays, but my mind is unfruitful. You don't know what you're saying. Romans 8, 26. In the same way spirit helps us in weakness, we don't know what we ought to pray for, but the spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And my last verse, 1 Corinthians 14, 1, the last verse here, which is the verse we first started. Pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. Prophecy is also a very key point here because ultimately we're all here meant to serve each other. 
We would love to create a culture at this church where everybody's prophesying over everybody. We used to belong to a church in a Bay Area called Jubilee Christian Center. And they always had a team of, okay, if you need a word from God, the altar is open. They have the altar workers there to pray for you. And it's like, you just come right up, you just say your first name, you just hold your hand, and they just seek God for your behalf and say, here's what the Lord's saying. So it's like, the altars would just be like, all right, whatever you need, come on. So they have their service. At the end of service, they say, okay, the altar, the Pastor Dick says, all right, thank you everyone so much, have a good night. The altars are now open. When he says the altars are now open, people like line up to go and talk to those people. And I would love for us to have that kind of culture here where we can prophesy over each other. And say, so here's what the Lord is saying on your behalf. One more verse, 1 Corinthians 14, 4. We already said that verse earlier. But anyone who speaks in tongues builds up themselves, edifies themselves. But the one who prophesies edifies the church, other people. So tonight, you're out there and you're saying, okay, how do I pray in tongues? I get it. Tongues is important. Tongues is crucial to unlocking the mysteries of God. Now what do I do? How do I do it? God doesn't move your mouth for you. You have to move it. So how does tongues happen? How do you pray in tongues? You just open your mouth. For the longest time, it was just, Angela, Angela you said something like, you're right, it was just like, hallelujah. And I just start letting the babble just go. And that's where it's called faith. How do I know if it's God or me? People, it's so funny. You know what's so funny? People say, well, tongues could be of the devil. Be careful, because tongues could be of the devil. So because of that, we don't even want to mess with that. I say, how weak are you? You know, the devil counterfeits God. Because the devil's not a creator. He counterfeits God. And how many of you guys know, I've never ever seen a counterfeit penny. Hmm. I've never seen a counterfeit penny. I've seen counterfeit $100 bills. See, counterfeits only happen to things that are value. So yes, there are people out there who counterfeit the gifts of the Spirit and fake it and whatever else. But there's the aspect that there's a value behind it. And so because of that, don't run away from it. Instead, say, I want the real thing. So tonight, let's all stand on our feet. And we're going to pray. We're going to pray and we're going to seek God. If you desire that gift of speaking in tongues, can you raise your hand if you desire that gift? Amen, 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 amen. Okay. For those of you out there right now, we want to thank you for joining us at our service. We pray that you were blessed. Uh, if you accept Jesus in your life, if you say, I haven't accepted Jesus before, pray this prayer right now. If you say, I'm ready to begin my relationship with Jesus, say, dear Jesus, come into my heart. I make you my Lord and my Savior. I declare heaven is my home. God is my Father. And I am a new creation. If you pray that prayer, shoot us an email. We'll send you a book. Uh, the Living the Abundant Life, which is a book that we wrote for you to start your journey with Jesus. Thank you so much for joining us, and God bless you. For those of us here tonight, okay, the broadcast is done, so we can keep recording. But for us, though, if you want and you desire to speak in tongues, can you just take one, like one small baby step? Because I know, you know not everyone will fit. But I wanna, we want to pray for you. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Speak. Okay, then great. Then just stay there. If you already do, then just do, if you don't, if you don't, if you're there right now, you're standing there. You're like, ah, I don't know if I want to get this. No worries. There's no, there's no, there's no like, oh, shame on you. You know what I mean? Like this is a personal thing, okay? But if you desire to speak in tongues, if you desire it, then okay, we're gonna do it tonight. But the Bible says the way it was, it's impartation. So for those of you who do speak in tongues. I'm going to ask that for those who do want to speak. So who wants to speak in tongues tonight? Raise your hand if you want to. Okay, 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 okay. Yes, yes, no. Okay, no, no worries. Yes. Okay, cool. So for, for, one, one more time. If you do want to speak in tongues, raise your hand one more time. Okay, don't, everyone, everyone, raise your hand. If you uh, are around a person who raise your hand, can you lay hands on them? And so if you can lay hands on, 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 on Devon. And then Angela on, uh, and, and, and Adel, if you can lay hands on uh, Eugene. 
Amen. 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 So right now, those who do pray in tongues, let's just begin to pray right now. Just open your mouth. Does if it's oh this is weird? I don't know. Just keep doing it. Just do, in faith. It's called faith. You don't know, but do it by faith. Lift up your hands to receive it right now. Oh, yeah. oh, Let your jaw just go. Just receive it right now. Oh, oh, do it by faith. Do it by faith. It might feel weird, it might seem weird, it might be weird, but do it by faith right now. Let your faith rise up. You're praying the perfect will of God over your life. Speak it louder. Come on, by faith in the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands to receive it. Lift up your hands to receive it. Receive it now, receive it now, receive it now. Yes, receive it now, right now, right now. Impart them right now, Holy God. Right now, Holy God, impart them with your Holy Spirit. Give them your presence. Like never before, Father God. Come on, 30 more seconds. 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 20 more seconds. Come on. 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 20 more seconds. Come on, 10 more seconds, 10 more seconds. Receive right now the Holy Spirit. Receive the power. Receive the power of the Holy Spirit right now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, Lord. 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 Everyone, lift up your hands right now. Right now, stretch your hands to heaven. Stretch your hands to heaven right now, everybody. In the name of Jesus, Lord, pour it out. Pour it out, Holy Spirit. Pour it out, Holy Spirit. Pour it out right now, Father God. Fresh and anew. May your power be upon us like never before. May we leave here never the same. Tonight, we declare we will pray in tongues every day. 
We will pray in tongues every day. The perfect will of God. Unlock your mysteries, Holy Spirit. Unlock the mysteries of heaven over us now. We thank you for a new day. When the enemy will give us doubt and, and wonder and, and worry, we rebuke that now in the name of Jesus. We step into faith into our new prayer language. And we give you the praise, the honor, the adoration, the glory. In the mighty, precious name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. amen. Give someone a hug. Give someone a hug. Amen, amen, amen. We hope you enjoyed today's service. Thank you for joining us. Make sure to click the link below on the Get Connected card, and we would love to plug you into our online worldwide community. This is our online church where we plug you into our private Facebook group with updates on our uh, prayer meetings, Bible studies, uh, get connected with the pastor, submit prayer requests, and just be part of our community online. We'd love to plug you in and be part of our church online. And thank you so much for all your generous support. We cannot do this without you. Click the link below on the giving tab and submit your tithes and offerings. And we thank you so much for giving to the work of the kingdom through this ministry. Thank you for joining us and see you guys next time.